Okay, guys, it's time to um, say hello to uh, all of you for our second uh, event of today in the Virtual World MOOC um, course. I would like to introduce to you Yvonne DeBandy, who is known as Evie Girl 3D and many other people <laughs> in virtual worlds. She's a creative, outside-the-box thinker, working as a computer programmer, a 3D website designer, developer, a virtual world builder, a teacher, musician, novelist, and artist. She embraces new technology. With a history of creating unique opportunities for educators, her current focus is educational environments and functional tools for teachers in virtual worlds and virtual worlds in a web browser. You're going to be seeing um, the fruit of her work in just a minute as we talk about what she's been doing in Web Worlds 3D, as well as having a chance a little bit later on to go and visit it ourselves. Um, she's a hands-on developer working directly with educators to customize tools and environments to match their needs. And it's uh, a wonderful uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Evie Marie. She's going to be putting in some instructions about our uh, media on a prim viewer here in Second Life and a link for those of you who might not be able to see the slides um, uh, in world. So take it away, Evie. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me in both Zoom and in Second Life? Terrific. Welcome, everyone, um, and welcome to those out there on Zoom and Facebook, as well as here in the VW MOOC headquarters. Happy to be here. My name is Yvonne DeBondi, also known as Evie Marie and Singer Girl throughout the other grids. Very excited to be here today to talk with you about 3D web worlds, virtual worlds in a web browser, and how they might be a solution for you, making online teaching easy. So once again, thank you to Nan and all the uh, conference organizers and also for that Zoom setup. That's been very helpful uh, for me attending sessions this week. All right, before we start with specifics, it might be helpful to know my personal interests in history revol revolve around education, creative arts, and STEM. I've had the honor of teaching many subjects over the years, but music education was my initial focus. And uh, many people look at me strangely when I put STEM and the arts in the same sentence. Um, and before I go any further, can you all see the slides here in uh, Second Life? It is media on a prem, so you will need to uh, make sure your media is turned on and perhaps uh, click, the, click the board or your camera icon. Okay, so if you cannot uh, see that, let me put the link here for you. You can see that through a web browser. Okay, terrific. All right, so many people look at me strangely when I put STEM and arts in the same sentence, but it's really not that much of a reach. Music and math go hand in hand. The science of singing and instruments includes physics and anatomy, just to name two. And of course, the use of technology is a requirement to survive in today's world, no matter what your subject of interest. Uh, my journey to use technology and teaching began over 20 years ago, fueled by the desire to save music education in schools to offer alternatives to, uh, to institutions facing the infamous arts budget cuts. I started with online distribution and subscription options of an authored curricula, and then turned that into a downloadable software as well as online and classroom textbooks. In my case, the system addressed the science of singing uh, designed for anyone to fill the music teacher role from the health teacher to homeschoolers. Uh, the online options and software um, offered affordable solution with audio, text, and interactive learning, and a direct path to me for assistance as needed for both students and teachers. For those students that signed up online, their homework, quiz results, and performance assignments came directly to me. And then once we began receiving repeated comments with words like, I feel like I have a teacher right in the room with me, uh, we knew that we were on the right track. After that formula was developed, we networked with other music educators that also authored curricula, helping them to do the same. Uh, we hosted and distributed the entire system for a while. And of course, I'm talking about the days. Yes, I'm, I'm talking about the days when, um, when creating a website 
seemed insurmountable, an, an insurmountable feat to many. It was complicated, it was expensive, and not to mention those privy to the information seemed to hoard it. And that is why I set out to learn it. And once I did, I shared it, just like I will do uh, here today with you for this new tech 3D web worlds, virtual worlds in a web browser. So eventually those educators in our network became able to manage their own online presence. And that's when I stepped back to look for additional ways to improve outreach. Uh, despite our success and comments like I shared uh, as technology moved forward, I knew we could do more. And I thought I found the answer uh, when I discovered Second Life around five years ago. I rented a large plot of land, built a large academy complete with self-study exhibits, live classrooms, and even a performance uh, venue where students could perform to a live virtual audience all around the world. It was successful, but only to a point because it was expensive for me. Students got frustrated with entry issues. And sometimes I felt like protecting my younger students required more energy than actually teaching them. Um, of course, we could have made the land private, but closing ourselves off from anyone who really wanted to learn was against my nature. So I really struggled with that. And then I met two amazing friends and mentors. Uh, I believe they're here in the room today. Uh, yes, Selvi Evans and Jamie Jordan. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, they introduced me to many wonderful and different ideas, but one day they provided me a web link that took me to a 3D website. The site only contained a sandy beach and a few floating objects, but my mind again exploded with possibilities. A website that was a 3D space you could walk into, no longer confined to a point and, and click two-dimensional page. And with the knowledge already gained about websites, and servers, I have not changed the slide yet. <laughs> yeah, just giving you a little bit of background because I think sometimes when we do um, presentations like this, uh, it's helpful for people to know that I have an educational background and not just uh, come from the computer, the world of computer geeks. Uh, so that's why I, I mentioned that, um, you know, I do have the website background. Um, and that Selby and Jamie introduced the idea of 3D websites. So it did take a little bit longer to research and learn the technology, but that was the day when they gave me that web link that 3D web worlds began to bring, bring life, uh, to breathe life. And to be clear, I'm not suggesting anyone dump Second Life or their hypergrid presence. I still maintain a, a small presence on the hypergrid myself, but the bulk of my teaching material is now on 3D web worlds. And I will also show you some of the ways you can combine your efforts using websites, 3D web worlds, and Second Life or the Hypergrid. It's all about what works for you and your students. Uh, and so once again, I shared this information to emphasize that teaching tools and providing teachers what they need to get the job done, no matter what the subject material, is of primary importance to me. Uh, as exhibited throughout my entire career, I am a teacher forced to go geek to get the, to get the job done. And this presentation is all about opening a door for you. And if the solution fits your needs, we want to help. So I work side by side with 3D Web Worlds members to make sure they have what they need, sometimes creating new tools, sometimes revamping current tools, and sometimes brainstorming together with trial and error until we find a working solution. Uh, and Selby can vouch for all those as well as Jamie since uh, he's been involved since day one. Uh, and perhaps the last one, most of all, we brainstorm and, and do the trial and error quite a bit. So without further ado, let's go to why we are here today and explore what 3D web worlds can offer you. The 3D web world is a virtual world in a web browser. Like Second Life or the Hypergrid, there is an avatar representation with communication options in a 3D environment. Uh, but it is a web page that you access through a web link, just like any other website. No download is required. Registration is available for users that want access to all of the options, but you can enter as a guest with only a name tag, no credentials required. And so after a short discussion here, I will provide a link to a classroom design just for you uh, so you can experience that ease of entrance for yourself. All right, so I am changing the slides. So just to make sure that you all are seeing the change. We're gonna start with a brief discussion on the top challenges faced by teachers and 3D environments uh, and why introducing solutions from 3D web worlds might work for you. Oh, great, thank you for letting me know. Okay, so the first uh, challenge that I faced myself and that I hear many talking about 
is how do I access it and where do I get where I am supposed to be? Uh, I was able to attend some wonderful presentations this week, mostly through the Zoom setup. Thank you for that once again. And conversation about the difficulties of Second Life entrance have been mentioned. I know I face that with many students myself. The challenge becomes greater if you venture to the hypergrid and the grid is not automatically provided in the viewer list uh, locations. Not to mention downloading a <laughs> not to mention downloading a viewer is not an option for those students needing to use a public library or a community system or a smartphone. That's okay. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, so that's why 3D Web World it has a little bit of a bump over perhaps a virtual world uh, like where we're sitting here in Second Life is that if you if you have a student that needs to use a public library computer or a community system um, or a smartphone, uh, so that option is often not available, but clicking a website and, and connection to the internet is. So 3D Web Worlds does have an advantage there. So just to give you an idea, uh, when we enter today, we're not quite ready yet, but when we enter today, this is going to be the easy entrance page. Um, all you will do is enter your name tag and click go and you will land exactly where you are supposed to land. This is a special link. We call it a designer URL created just for you. The same can be done for any region upon request or you can embed the region in your own website. Designer URLs have two main purposes. One, they restrict the landing zone to a designated region. And as you can see on the screenshot, uh, next to the word region, there are no choices, just simply the room title. That means that's where uh, you're going to land when you log in. And second, of course, to provide an easy shareable link, which comes in really hand handy. Now, even with the designer URL, if your region is set to public, people can still teleport from anywhere inside the connected system. So if a registered user has their home set to another location, they can easily log into their home base and then teleport in. Uh, every region can also be set to private access only. In that case, the region owner um, adds registered uh -huh. users, adds registered users to the uh, whitelist. It's a very easy process. And welcome to those on Zoom and in Second Life. Great to see you. All right, so in addition to the uh, designer URL options, we have special entry, entry points or topic portals. Each of these links has a different default landing. For example, the My Gallery uh, 3D portal lands you in the art gallery lobby. The My School 3D portal lands you in the school lobby. Uh, and just to show you that again, if we go back to this slide, this is the lobby of the school. And once you're in the lobby, you can access the full teleport directory, or you can use the elevators that you see on that image to the <coughs> left. And those images, uh, the elevator provides access only to the topic portal regions. So even though we are a large uh, selection of, of web worlds connected to the system, when you use the elevator, you will only see what is in the school. So that comes in very handy. provide a brief overview of each of the portals during our use case discussion, but with regard to setup and access, it's important to understand our two main entrance points. Uh, 3dwebworlds.com and 3dportals.com both land you in the orientation center by default. Uh, 3dwebworlds.com contains the networked avatars, which we will continue to discuss in detail. 3D Portals is a solo experience, no avatars, no communication, truly a 3D walk-in website, click and go link, not even a name tag is required. You're basically surfing the web, but in 3D, and you still have access to all the public regions that you would inside the network system. One of our primary reasons for setting up the 3dportals.com access was ease of use from a smartphone, older computers, and slower devices. Not to mention, it is an excellent way for students to use the self-learning rooms and exhibits, allowing them to study the material or do their homework without group distraction. 
And since I know it will be asked, I will address the question of 3D web worlds with networked avatars on a smartphone. Um, it is possible. However, a variety of reasons make it challenging and not all phones allow some of our options. Uh, eventually the smaller devices will catch up to the tech. Uh, until then we have found another workable solution. If you're working with a group of students that have only smartphones, we recommend combining 3dportals.com and the Discord app. And I would be happy to discuss that further after the presentation, or you can use the, the link I'm about to put in chat to get in touch with me. And I will uh, paste that in both locations for Zoom and uh, Second Life. All right, now on the, if you go to that link on the side of that page, you'll also see an invitation to join our Discord server, which is the fastest and easiest way to get in touch with me or the other 3D Web Worlds members, as well as keep up with the advancements through our news and other channels. Okay, so the next challenge uh, is environment creation. If you've done it, you know how overwhelming and time consuming it can be. And if you're not an expert builder like Luna out there, uh, it helps that we have many templates available. They're easy to use and easy to customize. In this image, we show one of our classroom templates on the left and one of our art gallery templates on the right. The numbered canvases that you see are, are to make it even easier for artists to plan their galleries and place their textures, but it's all prim based so the canvases can easily be resized, moved, or deleted. The art gallery templates are also a very good option for self-learning rooms. If you're converting a textbook or text lessons or image lessons to an interactive experience, then you might want to check out our art gallery templates as well. And of course, for, for those of you so inclined, you can absolutely build from scratch using prims or mesh and assistance comes in the forms of YouTube videos, written tutorials, and of course, our helping hands. So let us know if you need any help. You can upload your own items, uh, both mesh and textures, and you can set those items as private for your, for your, your use only, or you can also add them to our commons library, which makes them available to the public. Anyone can use the objects in the commons area, and you can also do some free shopping, which you can see on the image just provided. That is one of our free shopping uh, depots. You basically can walk around, pick up any of the items that you like to add it to your inventory, and then add it to your region. Um, these items are also available in our commons library, but sometimes uh, people like to window shop. So uh, you can either add them from the commons library without leaving your region, or you can go shopping uh, and see things in person before you actually add them to your land. And just of course, as an important side note, if you do upload items, please be sure to respect all intellectual property rights. Uh, there is a place when you upload mesh to enter the creator's name and every region um, offers a region credit window from the menu. Uh, this allows you to easily and legally use mesh from web libraries such as Sketchfab that require cre uh, credit to the creator. So you could surf the web through these wonderful uh, creation libraries. You can download them, make sure you save the creator's name. When you upload them into 3D Web Worlds, uh, where it asks for your for the rights, you put the creator's name. And then any time that, even if you add it to our Commons library, any time you add that to a region, it will automatically be added to the region credit window. So that makes building um, you know, a lot easier for people that prefer to download creations as opposed to make them themselves in 3D uh, software such as Blender. Okay, the next uh, challenge uh, for me uh, as a teacher, and I'm assuming for others, is lesson plan and presentation organization. Uh, I'm fairly organized, but even for me, my Second Life inventory can easily get out of hand. Uh, you could save a slideshow with your presentations in it, and if you forget to um, save it specifically with a name, or if you somehow uh, forget and, and save it with the same name, then you've got five slideshow presentations with the same name and which one was the one that you want to res for today. So if you're like me, you've honed your lesson plans over the years and often reuse the same prepared slides uh, when presenting the same course material. 
Uh, for me personally, there's hundreds of lesson plans that I use from beginner to advanced levels of many subjects, uh, especially since I teach all ages. So beyond the initial setup, I didn't want to have to do the digital preparation again. You know, I've, I've done my homework of creating those lesson plans, and I wanted to be able inside 3D Web Worlds to do the preparation once. I wanted to walk into the classroom, click a button, and have my slideshow for that class ready to go. I didn't want to search my hard drive for textures or worry about which computer I used or about transferring them to a laptop if I was traveling and teaching while I was on the road. I didn't even want to have to res something new. So, of course, also, it needed to be easy to update when uh, changes were necessary. If you're like me, uh, students often teach me something new, and, and that is when those lesson plans do need some changes. So that needed to be possible. So needless to say, this uh, lesson plan tool was created completely for selfish reasons. <laughs> it continues to evolve as others provide comments. Uh, it is undergoing a Selby update request right now, um, but actually the bottom line is the end result. When I'm ready to teach a class, I click a button to make the desired lesson plan active and away we go. So the reason that we are using the slideshow presentation in the manner we are today with the Mo app, which is a media on a prim in Second Life, and I've also provided a web link for those that had trouble. <laughs> and uh, is because I am actually using the 3D Web World's lesson plan system at this moment. This slideshow is in one of my lesson plan uh, modules. So I am also standing in 3D Web Worlds at the moment, and inside 3D Web Worlds, that slideshow is also showing. So uh, it shows you the power that you can combine um, this technology in different platforms. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you something that we recently have been working on uh, since we're talking about the power of combining technologies. And I think that's very important, especially for us here in virtual worlds. There's so many things we can do, and each platform has its forte. So sliding down to the proper slide. OK, here we go. So a few days ago, um, I put an avatar in Second Life, and I also put an avatar on the hypergrid, and I also put an avatar inside of uh, 3D Web Worlds. And what you see here is chat and presence from all three locations at one time. So if uh, we're going to talk about avatar identity in just a moment, but if the avatar identity is really important to your cause, um, it might be helpful for you to have a Second Life or a hypergrid classroom where the avatar comes in and they are actually sitting at a computer. Um, they could literally log in to 3D Web Worlds to study the uh, self-learning exhibit that you have created um, from their avatar. So they, they get the 3D uh, perspective from inside 3D Web Worlds, which is more affordable than having tons of land. Uh, in, a, in the virtual world that we're, where we're sitting now, um, it could be a, a, a big benefit. So much smaller cost to you. It's kind of like a win-win. So you can see the power of combining uh, that technology. And also, of course, you can even embed all of this on your own website. So if you're working your own website, we can set up both public and private regions uh, where your students can access through, what, through whatever means you need. Sometimes people have a registration office, but they want the rest of their classrooms to be private, and that's possible on your own website as well. Okay, I got a little sidetracked because I'm excited about that new development. So let's go back to our, our challenges, and that is uh, quizzes and learning quests, the gauging comprehension. Uh, 3D Web Worlds has a built-in working quiz and quest system. Uh, some teachers use the quest as a fun and interactive learning experience. Uh, the quest tools allow the student to answer the questions until they get the right one. And the quest can be repeated as many times as a student likes. So if you set up an environment um, on any subject, perhaps it's history, and you've set up this wonderful historical environment, you could set up a quest where the student uh, would, would have to look for the items. And as they reach the item, they would learn the information or have to answer a question. Uh, once they get a question box, they can answer that question as many times as needed until they get the right answer and then move along. 
when they get to the end of the quest, they, they have the option to take the quest again. Uh, the quiz tools, however, uh, when you set up a quiz, which is multiple choice, uh, that only allows you to for one answer to be submitted and it can only be taken once unless the teacher provides permission for the quiz to be retaken. So if you've set up a quiz, this, the student would go through and provide their answers. When the quiz is done, you can, as you can see on this slide, they automatically get their results uh, along with the correct and the, their answer. And you also as a teacher get those results in your console. Now, in my case, I gauge learning through both 2D and 3D measures, and I suspect those of you using Moodle would probably do the same. Um, but sometimes little quizzes in regions are very helpful that perhaps are not inside your Moodle uh, curricula. So if you want help with that and, and brainstorm on what the best solution would be for you, then just, of course, give me a shout. That's right, interactive homework. I use that quite a bit. I also use it for uh, lesson preparation. Uh, some of my students are much more responsive if they study through the interactive system before our, inter before our live class se session. And so they do the interactive homework, then they go to the live class session where we discuss it, and then they go back to the interactive room again. And I find that uh, some students find that the best way to retain the learning. And then, of course, those interactive rooms are always available 24-7, so they can access it anytime they need. Okay, so moving on to a very hot topic. And that is personal identity. Uh, this topic often creates a heated debate, so I'm going to brace myself in case some of you out there um, are, are in the mood for that. <laughs> uh, while we continue to experiment with options and listen to all suggestions, uh, the decisions made for 3D web worlds come from multiple angles, including but not limited to talking with other teachers, consideration of my personal teaching experience in both real life and virtual world classrooms, as well as the technical aspects of, of web browser limitations. So in real life classrooms, I watch students being bullied and belittled due to family income situations. Very sad. Everything from shoes to jewelry to designer brand items were fair game. And when uniforms were instituted, the harassment moved to hair color, hair design, makeup, physical and personal body shape, just to name a few. I don't know if, if you all have experienced that out there. Uh, in Second Life and hypergrid classrooms, I was surprised to find that the personal identity situation became even more distracting, not less. Students became hyper-focused on the shape and design of their avatar, which hair was the best, the best designer clothes, and when they weren't focused on themselves, I witnessed the same belittling, belittling and bullying, bullying towards those that were inexperienced or more challenged by avatar appearance or simply for the choices they made. And of course, I had to send many students back to the dressing room with the request to cover a few more pixels. So bottom line, appearance and everything related was a hindrance uh, for my students. So 3D Web Worlds currently offer simple avatars, identity forged by a single profile image that can be applied to their avatar, but mostly by their intellectual interaction with others and what they, what they say and what they do defines them. There are Insta emojis on the top of their heads that can be changed to share emotion or comprehension. And there's also an instant chat bubble option in addition to our standard chat tools uh, that can also be used as raising a hand, which is very helpful. So, um, and we'll experience those once we go inside. So any questions or comments before we go on to the quick image tour of our topic portals? Yeah, I, I've really found that uh, the simple avatars, not only does it allow for slower connections and slower computers to have more success in 3D web worlds, uh, but it completely eliminates all of that. But thanks, DJ. All right, so now uh, let's just do a quick tour through some of our topic portals. Uh, some of these image, images will also highlight a few of our tools, which hopefully will be helpful to you once we enter. All right, so uh, we have a large variety of options uh, for our topic portals, and we're also willing to add additional topic portals if we have some people that are interested in creating some of those regions 
Uh, we're going to start with My Office 3D. Uh, since we're sitting here in a meeting as well, we have a variety of options that are ready to go and in all sizes. Um, let me show you an example here. So this is a small meeting space. Uh, and in the background is a video aquarium. So it actually gives you the live feel of uh, being in an office with a large aquarium. Here's another space, which is more of a marketing space, has a lot of information on the walls for, for meetings of someone uh, coming in to learn about our educational systems. We have a large conference center for larger groups. Seminar settings. And these are all templates. Of course, you could build any setting you, you'd like by scratch if you wish. And of course, our private virtual offices. One of our next uh, popular topic portals is our art gallery, uh, walking around and immersing yourself in art is a wonderful way to experience it. You can actually uh, walk through art galleries from your own living room. Here is one of our photographers. Let me know if I'm going too fast on these. And this is an initiative that we started and is uh, still in progress. It will be an ongoing progress. It is our first art history exhibit, uh, basically. Thank you, Maggie. Um, basically, what we've done is some of the museums have started to release some of the masterpieces as uh, commons property. So we were able to um, access the Charles de Moose collection. Uh, he is a father of precisionism. And if you can see uh, underneath each of the images, there is a small black box. And when you hover over that little black box, it actually provides you all the information about the artwork provided. So it's a, it's a great way to just enjoy a beautiful gallery as well as do some, some learning in the areas of art history. And we'll be adding additional art history galleries as we move along. Now, as we mentioned those elevators earlier, I just wanted to show you that in our art gallery lobby, we do have a, uh, an elevator system. Now, once again, any of our regions throughout the network can be accessed through the teleport directory at any time. Uh, but inside each portal, there is an, an elevator system. So if you were standing in the art gallery and you wanted to just visit the art galleries, it's almost like you're standing in a building going up the elevator. And we've also recently created a meetup space for artists to, uh, to meet and enjoy each other's company while they're working on their creation, as well as preparing for some art classes that are coming soon. And then finally, to show you, we have a large selection of art gallery templates. Uh, this is, is one of my favorites actually because of the interaction involved. And each of these prims has already been set up for a canvas and all the artist has to do is replace the, the texture with their own artwork. It is prim based. So each of the canvases can be resized, moved, deleted. It's per perfectly customizable, but very easy to set up if you just want to use it out of the box. Our live music portal is just a little bit different. Uh, we do have different avatars inside our live music system. And that is, of course, so we can dance. Um, we're so used to in our virtual worlds, especially here in Second Life on the hy hypergrid that we want to dance. Now our avatars here are still very simple and we've, uh, because we do plan to use it in our music education system, I have kept them all uh, closed and very simple in G-rated terms. Uh, I'm sure they will develop further as we go along. This is a fairly a new experiment. And as you can see on this screen, uh, there is a live performer on webcam. So not only are we in an immersive space, enjoying the music, able to dance and express ourselves, but we actually get to communicate with the performer on live video. And uh, tonight actually, we have F and J, 
at 6 p.m. Pacific on our live concert stage. And uh, it's under the events tab on our teleport system, which you can see once we enter. And it's the first time there, so we're very excited. If, you, uh, if you're looking to, to see what that's all about, please consider joining us. Uh, coming soon, we have a comedy and entertainment. You knew I had to put that in there, Selby, since he's been working on that and we're working on some presentation systems. And now 3D Web Worlds does come complete with an event system. Uh, if you can see on the left, there is a box that is open full of buttons and the event tool is on the um, bottom left corner. And when you click that, it does open up all the events that are planned inside 3D Web Worlds. If you scroll to the bottom, you will see the um, recurring events. We do have weekly meetings, but the special events for the dates are always on top. And we highly recommend once again, joining uh, Discord or our blog where all of these announcements are made. And you can use that link I provided earlier, the 3 dwebworldswithazcom forward slash news. Yes, thank you, Selby. It is video, it's video streaming, real time with sound for the performers. It's really quite amazing. Okay, so we're, we're moving right along. I'm showing you the use case scenarios to, to show you how people are already using it. Uh, and with teaching in all different subjects, you know that there are so many things that you could do. And let's face it, sometimes teaching uh, these days is more performing, isn't it? Keeping the students interested. Um, probably our, our most active group right now on 3D Web Worlds uh, beyond the performance, the weekly performances that we have uh, is our writers group and their portal is fictionfountain.com forward slash 3D. Uh, we have three weekly meetings uh, two on 3D Web Worlds and one on the hypergrid. We meet very successfully uh, using voice and sharing different items uh, in writing uh, through our different communication tools. We also um, have writing exercises. So this is a large library. And if you can see on these tables in this slide, there are many different objects. Each table has different writing exercises where the writer can come through uh, and use those exercises to hone their skills. Here is another environment uh, that we've used to put some writing exercises. And of course, all of these could be uh, examples of what you could do as your self-learning rooms. And then we also have a writer's quest uh, that was created by Nara's Nook Monday writers, as well as Selby Evans. One of our newest ventures is uh, creating novel scenes uh, recreated in 3D. So uh, for the novelists that are writing uh, their books, we could actually create uh, the scene for them to get people interested or immerse them in it. They also can, can listen to the audio of the, of the author reading the book, as well as interact with objects. One of our newest projects for the writers is creating an entire writer's world where every time you walk up to a door, you, you meet a character or get a different story uh, in an effort to help people get over writer's block. Okay, so let's get to finally why we're here, the MySchool 3D portal. As I mentioned earlier, when you log into MySchool 3D, you land in the lobby if you're using the uh, portal entrance. We're gonna use a different entrance today, uh, but this is what the lobby looks like. When you, when you enter the school, you can either uh, walk down the hallways to enter classrooms, use the elevators to go upstairs, you can walk outside, and there's also a park out back that teaches people how to make the transition from 3D web worlds into uh, virtual worlds like Second Life and the Hypergrid. So it walks you through the whole idea of what, what's different between 3D web worlds and the virtual world where we're sitting like Second Life and how to download the Firestorm viewer and how, how to log in. So we try, we try to help students make that transition if they're looking for something, something more. Now inside, uh, 
inside this school is actually a full academy. As I mentioned earlier, this project kind of began for selfish reason, reasons, and this is our entrance to the A to Z Sing Smart Music Academy. Now on the elevator, you will only see this office. You have to come through this office to get to our additional classrooms. So if you had a school system connected to our network and not on your own server, um, we would put your registration office or your initial office. And then once they got there, they could take the elevators or walk down hallways to get to your additional classrooms. This keeps it a little bit easier uh, for students to, to walk around the school without being bombarded with hundreds of classroom options. This is an example of a self-study room. Uh, there's lots of interaction here where uh, when you hover over images, they change to different instructions. Uh, there are action challenges, there are audio. So uh, as you walk through, it's an immersive learning experience. And I will say that uh, between the textbook that where they could get the same information and this immersive experience, they tend to prefer the immersive experience. Here is one of our uh, virtual classroom templates. So it works right out of the box. You can customize it to some extent. Some of this is mesh. So you would either need to, uh, you could move the mesh, but if you wanted something different, you would need to delete that mesh and replace it with something else, either from our Commons library or Shopping Depot or something that you upload yourself. Okay. So finally, uh, we're going to be entering this classroom in a moment. As you can see on the right there, it says, Welcome BW MOOC 2019. We've created this. It's from a template, but we have customized it to um, assist with our presentation here today. And before I provide you just a few more instructions like movement and what we'll be looking for, are there any questions on what we've presented so far? Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Maggie. Yeah, well, you know, I think that uh, as we, we saw earlier in Val's session, it's a collaborative effort. And, um, you know, together we can make an amazing product. So a lot of these tools have been created for my selfish needs, as we discussed earlier, because I, I was using them. I was the first use case scenario. So I'm really excited to get other teachers involved. Um, and to, to hear the suggestions and, and to either create new tools or revamp tools. Uh, that work for your situation as well. Okay, so there are just a few changes that I want to, uh, you know, about movement and things that I want to make sure you're aware of before we actually enter. Um, this is our train station. It's actually where you land on the My Office 3D portal. Um, but as you'll see in the center, there's a little round circle. It's red in color and there's a big green arrow pointing to it on this slide. <laughs> so this is your focus point. Pretty much when your mouse look view, it's the center of your view. Uh, when you rotate your mouse, which will, I'll show you some movement uh, information in, in the next slide. But when you rotate, this red circle always stays center screen. When you want to interact with objects in world, that is the focus point that you use. So you would focus that on something to interact. And um, if if you're in a room and you get interaction that you're not interested in, then you just, you know, move your focus point off of that item and the interaction will go away. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to um, study this for just a moment for navigation. Uh, we do have a heads up display where you can click the buttons. You can also use your arrow keys in the WASD. You use your mouse to rotate. And if, you want, if you're using the arrow keys and the WASD keys to fly up or down, you simply look in that direction and move forward. So in 3D web worlds, we, use, we combine a lot of technology. 
when you want to navigate in world, you need to click or interact with objects, you need to click inside the 3D environment and that will activate these controls. When you need to interact with something that is on what we call a 2D overlay, you would need to hit escape to regain your cursor, do whatever you need to do, and then click back inside the world to begin navigation again. And this image is also available to you uh, right at the landing point of where we're about to go. Okay, so here's a list of some of the, um, off the top of my head, I just started listing some of the tools that you can use inside 3D Web World. So if we haven't covered one, or if you see one while we enter, I will put the link for you. In chat, um, or you can type it in yourself. We're going to remain in voice where we are so that we don't have to deal with uh, time for tech. And you should be able to open up a web browser and enter. So if you are a registered user, you can uh, use your registration to log in. And then on the teleport directory, the VW Moot classroom is a featured directory, so you won't need to search for it. If you're logging in from this page, you are going to log in directly to where you need to be. And I'm seeing people pop in. Uh, it looks like Maggie is. I can certainly screen share it, which shows some of the teaching tools. Yep, just click that button, Maggie. Take just a second for it to res. Terrific. All right, so go ahead for a moment and practice those movement. If you're new to the 3D uh, web worlds, practice the movement. I do suggest moving, uh, looking to the left once you enter the room. You'll see that on your, there's a, a purple button with three lines that looks like a mobile menu button. Those are your in-world tools. So anytime you want to do something in-world, there's also a bottom toolbar that provides you access to your profile, building tools, chat, and radar, as well as those live events we mentioned earlier. All right, great. And Maggie, I see that you have, you, you found the purple button, terrific. I wanna teach you all about the cameras. So on the top line, you'll see a mirror, a mouse, and what looks like to be a masquerade mask, which we call our stealth camera. And if you click the mirror button, which is the top left button on that little box you just opened from the purple menu, you'll see that you are looking in the mirror at your own avatar. Terrific, and if you switch back to the mouse, you'll be back to the view you were just in. And if you switch to stealth, uh, which is very handy in classrooms, you actually leave your avatar. So um, your avatar will stay put and you can wander around the room. Uh, now in stealth mode, you do not have the interactive ability. Uh, it is designed more for if you were sitting, like Jamie is sitting in a, a chair, um, which I'm gonna ask you to do in a moment. Um, that you could zoom into the Blackboard or to the slideshow without your avatar leaving his seat. And that also keeps um, your students from doing things in stealth mode when they should be paying attention to you. <laughs> okay, so for those of you on the floor, you can either click the um, nav head button, that is the fly up button, as you can see, if you're watching, I am uh, flying up and down, 
or you can just uh, click in world, tilt your mouse up and move forward and you will fly up. There you go. And now if you look down at the seats, you'll see there is a green triangle on each of the seats. That is a sit option. If you hover over that for just a moment, you'll get a pop-up that says, would you like to sit here? And that will place you in a seat. You actually have to put that focus point, Maggie, on the green. So you want to click in world and then focus your red circle down on that green triangle. We do this so that uh, interactions do not, there you go. And then just hit escape and okay, you got it. And now you're in your seat. You are not locked in position. That does allow you to continue looking around but you are now on the seat and you can uh, confirm that by clicking on your mirror button. And if you're not happy with the way that you look in the seat, you click the stealth button. So go ahead and click that stealth button. There you go. Now use your navigate up. Oh, so uh, click in world Maggie and, and move your stealth camera up to your avatar. I forgot to tell you to hit the rebake button so that the stealth camera would drop on top of you. Right, so now you can use the, um, the navigation HUD there to lower yourself into the seat if you want to be lower. There you go. And then once you go back to mouse, you can rotate your avatar to actually be in the seat. So um, we keep the uh, we keep you from being locked in your seat that so that you continue to look can look around and then if you needed to go to stealth view to see what was writing uh, being written on the chalkboard or on the slideshow you could easily do that and with some practice uh, you can move around easily and as you see when you hover over the boxes on the left hand side the purple menu button and the chalkboard that says camera buttons you can see that they expand into information. So if you would, Maggie, there you go. You're doing great for your first time in. Hover that red circle over one of those icons on the chalkboard. There you go. And you can see that it expands for you to learn more. And you could either walk up to it to get closer or while it's expanded, you could click your stealth button to get closer. So once you learn the camera navigation, things become very easy to control your interactions. Uh, DJ, are you using the link that we provided? Uh, you just click in world, Maggie, and, and use your navigation controls. You are not locked to the chair. You are just placed in it. Okay, I see. Okay, try choosing a different name, DJ, because I see you actually logged in as four, in four different times, five different times. So try just one more time uh, with a different name. And if not, I will work with you afterwards and find out why uh, your browser, are you using, are you using uh, Chrome by chance? I do recommend the Chrome browser, Google Chrome.
Okay, so I'll be happy to work with you, DJ, and find out why your browser is um, not liking that login. Should be very easy. Should be able to hit a name tag, as I can see all the people wandering around the room. Thanks for joining us. And I do apologize that you're having trouble, but we'll figure it out. That's what we do. All right, so I'd like you to draw your attention to the chalkboard where it says, welcome, teaching online is easy with 3DW. Uh, no matter what we prepare with our slides and what we prepare um, with our static chalkboards, there's always something else that you want to provide in real time. And perhaps you don't want to provide it using the chat option. And you can see that the text in front of you just changed on the chalkboard. A stranger to sit, what you want to do is focus that red circle in the center of your screen on the uh, triangle on the seat. And if you focus it there for just a moment, it will ask you, do you want to sit here? And you say, uh, hit escape and say yes. Okay, does everyone see that the chalkboard changed? Terrific, thank you, Jamie. So we can add to it. Maggie's got a lot going on in her viewer. <laughs> Would you like me to screen share, Maggie? Would that be helpful? Okay, um, I'm just wondering how I do that. Okay, now you can click on share at the bottom, Evie, <clears throat> and you can share your screen. Okay. Can I ch and I choose which window I want to share? So that yes, it'll, uh -huh. it'll show you whatever windows you've got open. And there you go. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. Okay. So um, this actually is wonderful because I can show you the presentation and the slides. So we watched all these slides, and this this was actually forty nine different slides. Uh, and what I like about this tool is that um, as much as I have an order. Uh, that is placed in order for me. And I could also write notes here if I wanted to that is available. Um, I can switch around. So if we wanted to go back to any number of slides and if you're sitting in world, you can see that the slideshow on the wall is changing as well as the uh, web link still in Second Life. And I'm gonna close that so that you can see this front chalkboard. And I can erase it and say, uh, and it changes the chalkboard in real time. You can see how that would be a valuable tool. Uh, and so for those of you that, that were uh, watching earlier and want, especially on a Facebook, I'm just gonna run around the room here to show you the different interactions. So this is what we would call an in-world interaction. You can hover over a sign 
So uh, this is ex especially helpful in uh, self-learning exhibit rooms so that you can put an interesting graphic on the front that will draw the student's attention. And then when they hover over it, they get the information uh, that they really want or, or what, what you want them to have, what they really need to learn. Um, you can do this in multiple sizes. So you can start small and then go big. You can even embed a web page, which is an inter interactive uh, pop-up sign. So this is our contact. And you can see that you can actually fill in the uh, contact form. And I can either hit the close window button or I can click world again and just hover away. All right, so now um, you can also, for the slideshow, for those that wanna see it right in their face, they can hover over the slideshow and it does come up in as a pop-up. They can look just beneath or if I go to my stealth camera, you see that I remained where I was, but I no longer have that pop up while I'm watching in a live classroom. So up and down in movement, you can also use your uh, arrow keys or WASD. And then of course to sit, we focus on a, a sit I hit cancel instead, sorry about that. And now we're sitting in a chair. If we were using voice in here, we would simply click this uh, button and it gives you voice private to this room. It is all secure, so there is uh, no lap, lap over of different classrooms. All right, so any questions uh, thus far? I can certainly take you to a self-learning exhibit room if you like. Uh, looks like we have just a little bit more time. DJ, were you able to look in the um, Zoom option so that you could see, and then we'll get you in after after the presentation? Okay. Um, so over here on the other side of the room, I just want to show you that we are able to include video uh, on these icons over here. In addition to video in world, we can actually provide it in inside the classroom. And once again, hover away and the interaction goes away. All right, so are there any questions? Because I will hang around and answer any questions that you may have. And once again, thank you so much uh, to the VW MOOC 19 for having us here today. Evie, I was wondering um, about the, the little X that's in the middle of that movement box. What does that do? That actually closes the navigation screen. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Let me see, let me resize a few of these boxes I have here. So if you close it, there's a, there's a tab over here and you can also drag it. So if it's in your way. Great. And there's also a lighting HUD here. So if you wanted to change your lighting, if it was too dark for you, uh, based on your own personal monitor settings. Um, through this this tab, as you uh, as you saw before, we we were up here. Oh, I forgot to show you two different things. My goodness, what am I doing? All right, so up here we have our emoji icons. Oh. So this is a very valuable tool inside your classroom. Um, students can share their emotions. You can upload your own. Uh, t teachers can upload their own set of emoticons. Um, students can say yes, I understand that. Let me look in the mirror so you can see that. I am spinning around.
All right, so when this happens, we do a reload. Let me just reload this real quick. Somehow between my variety of, uh, I've got a lot of tech going on my machine today. <laughs> it got a little confused. So here we are, uh, let me go to the mirror view. And when I go to the emoticon and I say, yes, I understand that. You can see now that that is what is above my head. I can also uh, use the InstaChat option and tell the teacher I have a question. And that's a, a very uh, valuable tool for, and we also have chat down here and we also have um, worldwide and region chat. So uh, this is a small section of your region chat. You have the full version here. And then if someone gets lost outside in the world and you're unable to teleport them, you could actually talk to them in worldwide chat because this is seen throughout all connected regions. Radar shows you who is in world and where they are. And we're gonna have to find out why poor DJ got lost out there. It looks like the system found her several different times as a guest. Uh, you can only have one username um, that is alike, but guests can duplicate because they are not using the registered features. So this is a home icon. When you're a user, you can set your home to a, spe a special location. If you want to teleport home at any time, you just click this button. Uh, this is the region uh, permissions or the, uh, the object credits that I mentioned to you. Um, this doesn't have any uh, mesh in it that wasn't created by me. So right now there are no, no, one, no one to list. But if we were in a region that had uh, some uploads from other people, then their names would be listed in this window. Uh, this is a teleport offer. So if, uh, if you have a registered user, um, you're able to click this button and uh, send uh, the registered user to your teleport location. Uh, and this is your teleport directory. So inside the teleport directory, you have access to a full uh, series of, of all of the networked regions. You can even access the private region menu, uh, but if you don't have access to those regions and you are not able to enter, they will uh, send you to the train station to catch a different train. So here you have all regions, uh, and then you can see that they are separated by portal. We do have a featured region session uh, section, which is where we have our classroom presented today. So all you have to do is click a button to uh, teleport. Let me go back into my mouse view. And then we also have um, a, a radio where you can change the stream. This is your rebake button. So if you have any trouble with your avatars and don't need to reload your world, you just click that button. And if you need to reload your world like you saw me do just a moment because I was spinning in circles, it's this button. It's very fast. It doesn't reload your browser. It just resets your world. Uh, and then in here is our presentation container. So uh, this is the lesson plan that I created for you today. And here are my slides and the order of which they are presented. And if I wanted to add notes for my reference inside that presentation, I would simply type them here and click Update Notes. Yes, yeah, so we've tried to think of everything, but again, we are, um, we've only been working with 3D Web Worlds for two, two years, I think. Maybe Selby and Jamie can confirm. I've kind of lost track of time. Uh, so we are continuing to hone each of the, the tools as someone comes in and uses them uh, and, and you know, ask for suggestions. Uh, as a teacher myself, most of the tools were created originally for my personal use of what I would use, but we're all different. So uh, feel free to uh, chime in with your two cents. We would love to make sure that it works for you. Just check over here in Second Life. Okay, great. So are there any questions or for those of you familiar with 3D Web Worlds, did I miss anything that is of utmost importance today? About two years. Thank you, Selby. I thought it was about two years.
Oh, thank you, Maggie. You know, it, it just like any other system, um, I don't know if any of you remember the first day that you logged into Second Life or how many times you tried to add a piece of jewelry and um, accidentally replaced all of your clothing with that piece of jewelry. Um, you know, there's a learning curve for everything. And what we've really tried uh, in 3D Web Worlds, and I know that we're a different and a little bit um, perhaps less techy concerning avatars and other options compared to other worlds. Uh, but my focus has primarily been on, can a student walk into a public library or a community a con computer center and use the resources? That, that has been the primary focus. So, um, just sorry, I'm looking at chat in Second Life. Sure. So, um, let me get myself in position. Sorry, I have a lot of windows open, so I'm just trying to um, get myself in position to. Okay, I just added a simple crate because it was in my inventory. And what you will want to do is on click that purple menu button and then click the reload world. But oh, I added a prim. Hang on just a moment. Let me fix that for you. I thought I was adding a box and I added a plane. Let me go to the library and pull out an actual object for you. Okay, so if you uh, click your purple button and then the reload world button, which is just a quick, yes, it has a, a huge library. And so I, um, I just look, this is actually my inventory uh, instead of going to the commons library, just cause I wasn't prepared. So this is my personal inventory that I was using trying to find something, uh, but you can actually go to, uh, let me show you that. It has a mesh library, so you can actually, um, here are some, the buildings that are available, props that are available, and you can uh, preview them and add them. So you can see here, and you, you actually navigate inside your preview. So if you wanted to add those, you could certainly do so. And so why don't I show you that right now? I'm going to uh, add mesh. Uh, and what I, I usually do for larger numbers is I do control F, 1719, there it is. Add the three bottles, reload my world. And now they're in the world.
It also has a, a very large texture library. So that, you know, this is a prim based world. So each of these is a prim with a, uh, and this, this actually was, is a template. So you could, with the click of a button, this, this classroom can be in place. Um, there is no, that the only limit of students uh, and prims actually, some, someone asked yes, a few days ago about prims. There's no prim limit and there's no student limit. Uh, the, the limits are all about the client, what, the, what computer your student is using. Um, if it can handle the memory and uh, of, of all the avatars and what's going on in the room. Uh, our voice option, it goes up to, uh, I believe it's 400 people. So uh, we haven't use, done the use case for that, but that is what the technology declares it can do. Actually, it declares thousands, but uh, we set a limit at 400. Uh, you just, to get out of the chair, Maggie, you just click in world and move. Yeah, you're not locked to it. <laughs> We'd like to help you with that stranger. What, uh, what is it that's causing you issues? Okay, so why don't we um, sit down for a, a little meeting and we can just walk through some of it. The tools are very similar. Uh, they're just used in a slightly different capacity. Uh, again, those were designed so that we use the least amount of resources in the web browser so that there would be no crashing, no, uh, no instances of trouble. And if your, your browser cache does get full, then you can easily click the uh, reload world button and you're, you're right back with a, a clear room again. And feel free to uh, venture around. If you walk out of the doors, you'll actually end up in the school. And um, you can also use the teleport menu. To go anywhere you like that's not private. And we also do have a building region. So if you're interested in learning how to build, um, once you learn the tools that are available, it is a very fast process and placing them uh, and resizing them, like obviously I just dumped them in the room, um, placing them and resizing them is very easy. Little out scope, outside the scope of this presentation, but would be happy to uh, set up an opportunity for us to go over those tools in an environment where you are able to build too. Uh, currently, I'm the only one able to build in this room. All right, well, if there are no other questions, I will hang out and uh, stop my screen share and you all let me know if I can be of any help. Thank you so much for having us here today and VW MOOC, thank you so much for the opportunity to share this uh, new technology with you. Bye everyone.